Saving and investing is probably one of the most important things that every family has to learn and probably also one of the most challenging things to learn as well. That is right. And if you're starting a family just like us, it is actually a great time for you parents to learn this discipline so all of us can actually pass it on to our children. And to teach us today how to be budget and investment savvy, we have with us Queen, turn TV host, entrepreneur, author, inspirational speaker, mom, <laughs> I, I wonder where she gets her energy, but welcome to our show, Miriam Kiamba Roberto. Hi. Hi, thank you, Cheska, and thank you, Rika. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, we're so excited as well. <laughs> yes, and we're excited to learn. I know, because everybody needs to know, of, you know, as much as they can about financial discipline, and mm -hmm. everything comes with a story. I wanted to ask you, how did you go about this? Like the very first time that you felt like I need to have financial discipline. Actually, I learned financial discipline from my mom. Um, she was a CPA. In fact, she's a finance director for a pharmaceutical company. But as young as I was seven years old, eight years old, she already helped me open my first bank mm. account. So since then, I've learned to be a saver. Na each time na kumikita ko from helping around the house or performing during Christmas parties and my aunts and relatives would give me money, <laughs> okay, then I'll put it in my bank account. <laughs> That's true. I'll put it in my bank account. And then eventually, when I started having my earning my own income, I just kept on saving, um, doing my best to live below my means. So you're a wise spender. <laughs> I guess it also uh, came from an example of my parents because they're not gastadoras either. Mm. I mean, both of them were, uh, my dad is a commerce graduate, my mom's an accountant graduate, so accounting graduate. So um, in the, they, I've learned how to be financially savvy because I learned it from my parents. It's really by example. All right, and right now we see three jars here. Actually, there are seven jars. So mm -hmm. can you tell us what these three jars are. This is the money jar system. Basically, it's a system in order for us to learn how to manage our money mm -hmm. and allocate our finances for special purposes. The first jar is called the tight jar. I truly believe that everything that we earn, all our jobs, everything that we have is from God. And so, in, if we put our tithes on this jar, if we tithe to the Lord, it's our way of acknowledging Him and honoring Him knowing that He is the provider of everything yes, that we okay. have. So for the tithe jar, I put 10% here. Uh -huh. Where do I send the 10%? I give it to church. The next jar is called my growth jar, which is about 20% of your income. Mm -hmm. I call this the growth jar because using this money, we're supposed to invest this for growth. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of the golden goose that lays the golden eggs? Okay. Mm -hmm. Isn't it that you, you you keep the golden goose alive so that it will keep laying the golden eggs and then the golden eggs will be the one that you will sell or in yeah. order to spend. So once you invest the money that's in this growth jar, that will be your go your golden goose, mm -hmm. okay. which will earn you passive income. Okay. So growth jar is never to be spent invest for investments or for business. Okay. 20%. The third jar is the spending jar, which is 70%. So the spend jar is uh, what you use to spend for your living, Grocery, living allowance, everything. Okay. So pay God, pay yourself, pay others. Now, this, this is a simplified form because this is what I actually taught my son. The money that's inside here it's is my son's, Joshua. Yeah. Did you ask permission from him? Yes, I did <laughs> last night. And he said, why mommy? Can I be there? <laughs> Joshua, you have school. <laughs> so he was kind enough to lend us this, these jars. But this is the simplified way. The way I learned it was that they actually taught us more jars, which I'm going to yeah, share with you today. Which is why it was originally so seven, have, no? Yes. Four this, more. Yes. Oh, I love our guest. She's really getting down on her knees to explain to us. You are so passionate, okay? So once again, this is 10%, this is 20%, and the 70% will now be replaced with more jars. The next jar is the learn jar, which mm. is another uh, 5 to 10%. Actually, the percentages from here forth are suggestive, but, and you can change it according to your needs. So the learn jar is meant to invest in yourself, to, to uh, invest in seminars, books, mm. and everything that will help you learn more about investing and putting up a business. Okay. The next jar now is the live jar, which is for your necessities. 
uh, this is the money that you will spend for your living expenses such as um, electricity, food, transportation, water, communication, okay. etc. Okay. The next jar is the LTSS or Long Term Savings for Spending. Okay. This is between 5 to 10 percent and you use this money for things that are nice to have. For example, you want, you want to upgrade your computer or your gadget, okay. then you save up and put it in the long-term savings for spending such that when you have the money to pay in full in cash, then you, you use can that actually money do to that. spend. Yeah. The idea is for guilt-free spending, mm. so you don't have to yes. uh, you don't have to loan money in order to pay for what you want. After that is your play jar. Once again, this is still part of the 70%, the about 10%, 20, and then the 70 is divided into these jars. Okay. Education, learn, live, long-term savings for spending, or dream, and then your play jar. This play jar is the budget that you will allocate naman for entertainment or or money that you will use to spend with your family to enjoy yeah. yourselves like watching a movie, Movies, yes. going on a holiday, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, or eating out. Yan. Eating out, eating in. Mm. After that will be the share jar. Of course, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing. Right. So likewise, we must also allocate money about 5 to 10 percent in order to be a blessing for other people. Okay. In my case, I support World Vision Development Foundation. Mm -hmm. So my allocation goes straight to World Vision mm -hmm. Foundation. Then mm -hmm. that is my share jar. Wow, I, I love this uh, whole concept of uh, seven jars mm -hmm. only because I think what it takes away from you is the guilt like even yes. for your play jar, sometimes we feel like I don't want to eat out na, parang I don't mm -hmm. have money na. That's because we did not allot properly for the yes. other areas of our lives. That's why we're we're uh, we're not secure or we're mm -hmm. not confident about mm -hmm. spending. For me, I think it gives you motivation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and something to look forward to, and it excites you to do it because mm -hmm. you see where your money's going to. Yeah. But what I'd like to know also is. What were your first investments after following this simplified this system? Um, system? Yes. Actually, before I learned the system, I've been investing already in real estate. Mm, okay. uh, back in 2002, 2003, I looked at my bank account and saw, wow, I have six figures from all my savings. So why don't I invest it? I picked up several books of Robert Kiyosaki's and then discovered passive income from real estate. Later on, uh, when I learned about these and, and I kept on earning and earning, I continued to invest in real estate and I still earn passive income from those. So real estate is one, but there are many forms of investment. Now yes. my question is, there are different types of people, mm -hmm. not everyone's like a Miriam or a Rika or a Cheska. How do we know the best kind of investment to take for the kind of person that we are? Before you go into investing, I believe that all of us should have a contingency fund. Okay. So the first thing that you should invest on in your from your growth jar is to create a contingency fund which composes three to six months of your income mm. monthly income and just keep it in the bank for emergencies or contingencies in case there are calamities in right. case there are medical emergencies then you can use that money so that you don't have to loan money from anybody else or you don't have to dip on your living jar in order to uh, spend that money. So three to six months and then work up to one year. Once you have the contingency fund, you put it in a, in a, in a bank account uh, that will be easily accessible for you. And then you can start investing in business or mutual funds or, or the like. Okay. What are the risks that we encounter when investing and how do we deal mm. with it? One cardinal rule is investigate before you invest. I like that. <laughs> I and I investigate before, before you invest, invest okay. because there are a lot of people who invest in bus businesses or direct selling or whatever pyramid schemes that happen to be scams. So because we need to be wise investors and protect the money that we worked so hard for, we really need to be do our due diligence before we invest in anything. Um, after doing our research, we should also consult with reputable or credible people 
who know more about investing in finances such as let's say Ching Kitan or Randall Tiong yes. or or other mga financial consultants so that we can be better informed about these investments apart from that reading books on finance right. on investing and in business will also give us information and then before we invest on a business we should know about people who are behind the company. Are they reputable? Mm. Are they credible? Are they scammers? Mm. Um, apart from that, if, for example, we want to open a franchise, um, we also want to know if the product is good, if it's something you believe in, yeah. if it's something mm. that will work in the market. There are so many, so many things that you need to research. To con consider, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But now, you are, like what you said, you're an instant mom. <laughs> <laughs> Locking the instant mom. Yes, yeah, so you're an instant mom. Mm -hmm. How do you teach this to your children? It's really important to teach our kids financial discipline because as scripture said, train up a child in the way he should go and he will not depart from it when he grows up. So imparting this knowledge to our children is very important as young as they are so that they will develop these habits and not depart from it. In my case, my son as young as seven years old, I already taught him the three jars. A few weeks later, um, without his knowing, he was already earning so much because we made a deal with him. We're encouraging him to read books. And for every book that he reads, he will earn the, the number of pages in pesos. Oh, wow! wow. Yeah. Yeah. Such a reader. <laughs> Can I be your child? <laughs> uh, for, if, for example, 250 pages in isang book, if he finishes that, then he earns 250. And you know what? Yesterday, um, they were just in the mall and he said, Dad, I want to buy a pet. I think I can afford a pet. So they, <laughs> <laughs> so they went to the pet store. He was already looking at this hamster that he likes to buy and this cage. And, you know, I'm just so encouraged that uh, our son, young as he is, is already learning how to manage money, is already also gaining confidence that he can he can afford something so that one day um, he will have the financial savvy and the discipline to manage his money right. and to be a better steward. Thank you for sharing your life story and imparting with us the things that um, you've learned along the way and surely I'll be able to share this to my husband yes. and to my children. So, thank you very thank much. You. Thank we'll you. We'll see you thank next you. season. Thank <laughs> you. And thank you for this opportunity. In case you have questions, my email is miriamq888 at gmail.com. Email away, guys.